Hello and welcome to the Half in the Bag commentary track for Ghostbusters Peace Sign. I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And I am the Keymaster. Oh. Oh. That was just a big failure right off the bat. <laughs> just like Ghostbusters 2. Yes. Uh, um, well, I guess we should say right off the bat, uh, rest in peace, Harold Ramis. Yes, of course. Uh, we're talking about one of his, his lesser works, but I think we all still uh, loved and admired a lot of things that Harold Ramis did. So. Ghostbusters 2 is not one of them. Although no. he has his moments in this. He, Egon's the best part of this movie. He has the best, uh, the best bits. But this is a terrible, terrible film. <laughs> Would you call it a terrible film? Mm, no. It's It's the embodiment of how not to make a sequel. It's the exact same movie, uh, almost scene for scene. You can, you can look at scenes in this movie and pinpoint exactly the equivalent of that scene yeah, in the original exactly. movie. Yeah, All the plot points are uh, identical. Yeah. We got to remember to point out all the equivalency scenes. Yes, this yes. This is, of course, the uh, the old lady in the basement of the um, the New York Public Library scene. The yeah. opening. It's the opening tag. Which which most movies have the you know the opening scene of a movie kicks it off. Yeah. But, I actually uh, kind of like this scene. I don't. No. Why don't you like this scene? Because it's stupid. <laughs> I care to elaborate? Uh, it's dumb. Uh, uh, some slime got on the wheel of her carriage and moved it around <laughs> to the point where they <laughs> dig in the street later for no reason, which appeared to be a random spot above the river of slime for absolutely no reason. <laughs> so, uh, so it was clearly a, a, a very, very terrible way to shoehorn in Sigourney Weaver's character for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, well, that's that's so, the huge so Jay, coincidence other, that she's right in the, the heart of the, the threat of this movie, just like yes, the first yes, movie. Yes, because her baby carriage rolled over a random patch of slime that somehow got all the way up to street level, even though later in the movie it's clearly running in a river uh, 700 feet below the street. And it's just randomly Dana Barrett, too. Yes. Yeah. And it's not yeah. like it had to be Dana Barrett because of Gozer or anything. No, like every, everything in this movie happens so they could it's, have it be the exact same yeah. thing as the first movie. Other than the cute baby, the in, on opening sequence is completely stupid. It's Well, it doesn't make any sense, but it, like the, the out-of-control carriage, like I think that's fun. It's fine. Oh, I thought it was going to be He-Man. Uh... I... I Okay, He-Man was like gone two years <laughs> before little, they made this movie. A little outdated at a little the time, outdated. I remember. Oh, there's little Jason Reitman, who went on to, to become a, a fine filmmaker in his own right. I really like his movie, uh, Young Oh my God, I'm breaking things. Uh, young Adult, I like that movie. And the mom is Mary Ellen Trainer, who was in every single movie made in the 80s. <laughs> this is the only good music in this movie. There's nothing strange! In the neighborhood, we gonna call. And it don't look good. Is it weird that the the Ghostbusters theme song is now in the Ghostbusters yes. universe? Yes. I always thought that was odd. And it's also weird that they changed their logo to say two. That yeah. makes no that sense. Completely. I, I don't know if that's considered breaking the fourth wall or what. I, I guess it would be. Their their company though is not a sequel. No. They're just reopening their company. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Yes, we're back. Well, they are. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's it a revival. It it's stupid. I don't think anybody likes that logo. Do no, they? no. Or the the retro car with with uh, the new um, when they update the car for the sequel yeah. and they have like. No, and it's not like Ecto two. It's Ecto one A. Oh, is it? Is that what they say? Yeah. Oh. A, lot of, a lot of things in this movie are done for the sake of like the cartoon that was going on at this time. Yes. Like the cartoon had an Ecto two helicopter. So oh, they I don't couldn't, remember that. So they couldn't call the Ecto one in this the Ecto two. They had to call it the one A. Oh, interesting. Well, let me ask. Do you guys remember seeing this movie for the first time? Do you remember what your reactions were yes. when you first saw it? I hated. Well, I remember hating the slime plot. I thought that was just retarded. Yeah. yeah. And just in general being let down after the first act. 
I, okay. I love the first part where you see where, like where they are now. Yeah. Well, this, that's what's interesting is like I like seeing where they are now, but this would have been more interesting seeing where they were if this was like a sequel made now. Like mm -hmm. right at this is only a couple years after the first one. It's dumb that the Ghostbusters are broke up and they have to get back together because just for the purposes of recreating the first movie again. Mm -hmm. Like if this was like. Egon, you know, they're all retired from Ghostbusters now. He's in his 60s. He's doing these weird experiments. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray runs an occult bookshop. Like, all that stuff would have been interesting if they were older. Right. But right. having it happen right after the first movie is is a lame way to, to just write the same script again. Yeah. Because... Which, which is evidence in my mind that they should never make Ghostbusters 3. I mean, they really can't now. They'll remake but Ghostbusters. 1. That's that's the thing is there's in the the wake of Harold Ramis's death, like the day after he died, everybody was like, "We're still making Ghostbusters 3. Like, fuck you, assholes. Get you wait a month or so before jumping all over it. But are they, uh, they going to call it three or I remake that's one? I think even if because there's been talk for so long that it'll be a like passing of the baton movie to these younger comedians or whatever, and the original members will have you know one or two scenes. But I, I think even if that is the case, they will not call it Ghostbusters 3. They'll just call it Ghostbusters. Yeah, but we all know when they make a new Ghostbusters, it'll be proton packs firing every two seconds. Yeah. It's yeah. Like They're going to look like iPods on their back, too. Yeah, good call. Mm -hmm. Good call. They wanna, they'll be sleek and mm -hmm. black. Mm -hmm. It'll be, it'll be like the RoboCop remake. It'll start look, looking like this, and they'll say, we got to upgrade. Right. Oh, will the will the Ghostbusters car be be something new now? Mm. Will be a... well, it'll have to be, yeah, because they will have to change everything for no good reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of things they'd update, this is I I didn't realize until recently the first Ghostbusters uh, uh, Sigourney Weaver was like 36 when they made that movie, and the equivalent of her character if they made this now, no studio would cast a 36 year old actress. It would be someone like late 20s, mm -hmm. maybe 30 at the most. And here's Vigo. Not quite as interesting a villain. He's such a letdown when he walks out of the painting. Yeah. They should have had him walk out all majestically and then trip and fall. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like that the villains in these movies are treated seriously. Like, even of when course. he's saying his, like, from the, what is his big speech in this? Yeah, yeah. It's so goofy, but he plays it so straight, and it works. But unfortunately, he does nothing in the film. He does nothing in the movie, and he's uh, the the ending is horribly anticlimactic, when they just kind of shoot him, I guess and then that's the end of the movie. That, but... We'll get to that, yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, and that's another thing. Uh, they broke up. Bill Murray and Scarney Weaver broke up after the first movie, so they could have a romance blossom in this one again. Right. <laughs> The only difference is that she has a kid. Yep. So this scene, of course, is the equivalent of the Bill Murray comes into her apartment the first time scene. Yeah. And and makes awkward advances on her and pokes around with the little stick thing. Yeah. Yeah, exact same movie. This this scene does feature my favorite Egon line, though, in either of the movies. Oh, the, the well, slinky He line? says, I had part of a slinky. I straightened it. You mean you never even had a slinky? We had part of a slinky, but I straightened it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just trying to imagine the backstory of how he ended up with part of a slinky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where's the rest of it? So this movie came out in 1989. Summer of 89. The oh, yeah. The movie summer ever. It was like Back to the Future 2, um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Was that Last Crusade? Last Crusade. Last, Last Crusade. Crusade. 89. Batman. Batman. Uh, but the most important movie of 1989 that came out uh, UHF. was UHF, yes. Was that 89? That was 89. Was nope, 89. Oh my god. And it flopped. That's why it flopped, because it came out against Ghostbusters 2, uh, Back <laughs> to the Future 2, all these big movies. But I probably rewatched UHF more as a kid than, than any of these, those other movies. Except for maybe Batman. I watched the shit out of Batman. Oh, look at when these when these guys were put to the electric chair. Apparently their chairs died with them. Mm -hmm. And they look like the, uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> if, if ghosts can wear clothes, they can have electric chairs. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, so why, why do they come out of the slime? Yeah. Is the question, because, I don't know. Because <laughs> movie? Because this is, we need a scene that gets the Ghostbusters back into business. Yeah, this is the equivalent of the Slimer scene in the first movie. 
This movie's insulting. <laughs> you know, as a kid, it always bugged me that they weren't wearing their uniforms during this scene. <laughs> <laughs> They're in it's, a courtroom. I know. I was a kid. I wanted to see the Ghostbusters in their jumpsuits shooting ghosts, not, not in suits. You'll see plenty of that later. <laughs> You can still see that today, actually, if you go to a, a convention that Ernie Hudson is at. He actually wears the Ghostbusters really? uniform at conventions. Huh. Yeah, oh, that's, it's a, it's that's a little sad. sad. It's a little yeah. sad. That's that's the line that you should never cross. So they just got their firehouse back? Just like that? <laughs> or were they paying rent on it for three years? <laughs> Five years. I guess they purchased it, right? They, they, they Yeah, they put out a third mortgage on, yeah. on Ray's house. At 18%, you didn't even argue. <laughs> And that's an aspect of the movie, the first movie I really love is uh, there's things I've appreciated about that movie, different things as I've gotten older. Yeah. Like that's the most recent one is all the, the detail put into like these schlubby guys trying to start a business. Like I like that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You can identify with that. Exactly. They get this, this they start uh, working in a dumpy building, all things I can relate to. Oh, no, not this scene. This scene I vividly remember seeing in the theater. Yes. Um, because there was some, like, drunk hooligans in the theater, and they started <laughs> okay. yelling. When she takes off her shirt, they started yelling, like, Take it off! Uh, and I was, like, there with my dad. It was horribly awkward. I think this is this is the moment when they show the cartoon bathtub. That's the moment that lost me. I was I was on board up until that moment. Oh, really? When the bathtub, like, is trying to grab her, and it looks, it looks so terrible. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> And that, I think that was it. That was it. That was the, the I was fine moment with the you river of out. slime and the painting and all all the other stuff, but you what? They're in jail. I mean the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, they changed it from jail to the hospital. That's something different, all right? <laughs> I'm breaking new ground. <laughs> I was going to say, you actually see them leaving the psych ward in this, uh, which is different, but you do see them leaving the jail in the first movie, yeah. so never mind. They get out. The they sky get, they get is even the same effect. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have a line. He says, have you ever seen anything like this before? And I was thinking, yeah, in the first movie. <laughs> like, this is just an excuse to use these things. <laughs> well, they got to sell toys, Mike. Yeah. They gotta make toys of this I so they can that. sell it. The slime has a different consistency here too. It looks like silly string. Yeah, but but can I just point out too that they only have four of these things that look like it holds maybe two gallons. <laughs> <laughs> like really? I, I could forgive that if I cared about any of what's happening in the scene. Oh, and there's the old <sighs> Nintendo joystick. Yeah. Here it is. Here's where the movie completely falls apart. <laughs> So what they they what they well the so they they establish earlier they play happy music and the yeah, toaster oh, no, dances I, I get yeah no but but like why they play music here but they still have to use some sort of Nintendo joystick to control it mm -hmm. just so that it, it can show that they know they could tell it where to go they could direct, direct otherwise it. it would just hop around randomly or, yeah. but what is the Nintendo joystick it has a up circuit to? board on it Jay. Because science. <laughs> Egon made it. Egon made it. Oh, okay. So why does the robe move? <laughs> why does the head look around? No, nothing about this makes any sense. The torch actually doesn't shoot fire out either. <laughs> I, I don't think there's like propane and gas inside the torch in real life. Yeah, there, there's a lot of things uh, with Ghostbusters. You have to suspend your disbelief to a certain extent, but this is just... And I also think... The second the Statue of Liberty stepped on a street, it would collapse into it because mm -hmm. it's not solid ground. It, there's, <laughs> it mm -hmm. does crush a car. It, do, it does crush a car, but, but it, it would, should be like breaking down into the sewer it, system. It would just immediately and collapse system. into the into the ground. Yeah. This is this is this is the worst. Thing <laughs> ever. It's, it's so illogical, so cartoony, so. <sighs> I do oh. like this makeup on him here. Yeah, the demon character looks cool. Here's here's the big Ray possession payoff. <laughs> for one second. He gets possessed for one second, and then that's it. Oh, Harold Ramis has a great line. 
<laughs> We'd like to shoot the monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makeup's great. Although Winston's reaction was real good there. Mild fear. <laughs> Just like, oh. <laughs> So they're shooting him with positively charged slime, and they're shooting the painting with the the proton packs. What is this? Uh, what is this doing? It uh, defeats evil, Jay. <laughs> That's not even what you the proton you can packs clearly do. See. I know they're like lassos, basically. I know There's lassos for ghosts. Mm -hmm. I mean, they could have come up with something clever. You know, like they could have thrown like turpentine on the painting. Oh, and that could have defeated Vigo. Yeah, and that would have been mildly clever. <laughs> But that wouldn't involve them shooting their proton packs. Yeah, you have yeah. to you have to have them shooting their proton packs, even if it doesn't make any sense, just because they're Ghostbusters and that's what they do. The well, end. That's, that's Ghostbusters too. Yep. Why do you people want Ghostbusters three? I mean, this movie is proof. Yeah. It's evidence that it should never happen. Light lightning in a bottle. That first movie. Yeah. You can say that the concept works in different realms, but it really it. With so many specific decisions made by these specific people that made that movie what it is. It's just a lot, a lot of, a lot of people not getting it, you know. See, I don't know if this is terrible as much as it is just a letdown. It's definitely not good. Yeah. Oh right. You could do worse. Oh, there's been plenty of worse sequels, but. <sighs> I don't know. It, this is almost worse in the sense that it's so uninspired. That's like, like, you know, when something is that middle of the road, it's, it's almost worse than like a complete disaster of a sequel, because that's at least interesting in a certain way. 